here's another rational function that we're going to try to find the equation to. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did the last time. I'm going to look at what the x-intercepts are. And it looks like I have one x-intercept at minus 2, 0. My vertical asymptote, I have one that occurs at x equal minus 1. And I have a horizontal asymptote at uh, y equals 0. So I'm going to just set up my equation just like normal. So my f of x is going to look like uh, this. x-intercepts, of course, always occur in the numerator. So I have a factor of x plus 2, because when I plug minus 2 in here, I get 0, which is what I want. And in the denominator, I'm going to have x plus 1, because when I plug minus 1 in here, I get a 0, which is also what I want. That's what creates the asymptotes. Now I need a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, and this is where the challenge comes in. If I think about, for large x, what f of x does. So for large x, I only have to look at the dominating terms. So that means f of x, in, in right now what we have, f of x is equal to x over x, which gives me 1. Well, I want my horizontal asymptote to be 0. So the only way that's going to occur, so horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 occurs if f of x equals 1 over x for large x. Because as x gets larger and larger and larger, where does this number go? Well, it goes to 0. So let's write that down. Because as x goes to infinity, f of x approximately equal to 1 over x goes to 0. And that's what gives us our horizontal asymptote. So in order for that to happen, I have to change the degrees of this. Because I need a denominator to have a, a slightly bigger degree here. I mean, this could be 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, whatever you want. But it has to have a slightly bigger degree. So I'm just going to modify this. Well, let, just for kicks, let's take a look at what this looks like. All right, let's clear this one out. Clear this out. And if I just type it in as is, I have x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. And if I adjust my window, I think that window will work, minus 5 to 5, minus 4 to 4. And I graph it, and I see my x-intercept in is in the right place, my vertical asymptote is in the right place, but this is in the wrong place, this branch. And notice I don't have, this doesn't dip down. That seems to be level. Looks like it has a horizontal asymptote at 1. Let's check it out. And sure enough, well, that's not what we want. Now, just shifting it down won't work because this whole branch is actually in the wrong place. So if we go back to the idea of that I need my denominator to have a greater um, degree, let's just see what happens when I make this a 2. So now this gives me a ratio, not this, but I get an, a ratio that's approximately equal to x over x squared, which gives me that 1 over x, which is what I want. So let's go back in here and change this. Stick an x square or a square in here. And let's get rid of this for now. And let's see how it looks. So now, hmm. When I compare the two, the only I see I got a horizontal asymptote at zero, but it's upside down. So if you remember from transformation of functions, how do you reflect something over the x-axis? Well, you make the whole f of x negative. So this is not something you do really quickly. So this negative comes from trial and error to turn over your graph. So again, it's not going to be just a one-step process. You try something, you see if it works, and then you make it fit what you want it to do. So now let's stick that negative in there. So second, insert negative. And sure enough, it does exactly what we want. So our final equation turns out to be f of x equals minus x plus 2 over x plus 1 squared. And please, people, don't multiply that out.